this character, when, when your brother said, hey, I got an idea for a script, uh, and you said, oh, that's great, what am I going to be in it? How did he describe this character to you? He said it was basically going to be like me growing up. So it's very loud, very eccentric, very comedic and goofy. So he said, I'm going to take adolescent Kevin and I'm going to combine it with inspirational dreamer-like contemporary Jack and there's going to be a fusion of those two. But ironically, Paige, my wife, was cast as Mia first and the producers wanted a bigger star for Lucas originally. And I was looking to retire from acting and go into finance, so I didn't take it personally. I understand that's how the business works. And then there was a big actor from Stranger Things who ended up not taking it, and then I got the role. So I had to thread the needle there on if I was actually going to play Lucas, and I'm, I'm happy it worked out. The character you create, the Lucas character you create, yeah, I heard you talk about, yeah, a little bit of Back to the Future. He is a Christopher Lloyd, he's the young Christopher Lloyd, and I, I like that even down to the goggles. So, yeah, yeah. Talk, talk about cre uh, crafting that character. So, yeah, I, uh, the, I mean, he was written for my brother, Kevin, from the very beginning. Uh, I think what helps is we have, uh, you know, 29 years of shared comedic sensibilities and, uh, you know, tastes and, you know, especially film taste. We, you know, we grew up watching movies. And uh, Which one? Oh, man. October Sky is one of our favorites, which is very much a similar thing. You know, Homer is trying to build these rockets in a small town and his father's like, give up on that dream. You belong in the mines. And, uh, and so in crafting uh, Doc Brown, you know, we pulled a lot from, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean with Jack Sparrow and stuff like that, those iconic kind of characters. But uh, my first pitch was like, it's like a young Doc Brown split also with a little bit of Marty McFly. Like what if those characters were combined and he, you know, he was younger. Uh, and the main thing around that character was I, I essentially just wanted to create someone who kids could aspire to be. Who the hell are you? Oh. Hi, um, I'm Mia Ibarra, electrical engineer from High Spark Renewables. Uh, I'm just here to research your son, uh, nephew's recent reports on um, uh, electronic. Electromagnetic radiation energy, yes. You read my reports. Come, camera. Hi, Lucas Fletcher, chief engineering officer, accountant, treasurer, president, and vice president of Lightning Valley Research Group. Wow, that's quite the resume. And this here is my intern and trusty steed, Clem Hickle IV. Right. Documentarian. You one of them Sasquatch hunters? Uh, no, just an engineer. Wow. Oh, it was so much fun following Lucas's character around, who in real life is my husband, of a week at that point. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun for us uh, to play pretend together and uh, following him around. Basically, it was like we were at home, so it was not new to me. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, he's just such a character that it was, it was great. I had a, an amazing time doing that. What did you like most about your character? Uh, like I said, I think Mio is really, really bright and driven, and I just really was inspired by her charisma and just wanting to make a change in the world, you know, because that's so important, and a lot of people don't, they don't make the choice to do that, you know, they just kind of like fall flat and give up, and I don't see that from her, and I really, really enjoyed that about her character. You know what's really fun in this movie is knowing now that you're newlyweds, and yet Jack didn't put a really romantic element into your character, which I really appreciated in, in that movie as well. Exactly. I know, I agree. I think that, that you would think that it, there's always some sort of love story in a movie, and I think it's really cool that this was not very apparent here. And um, I think that was great, you know, and um, yeah, I just I think that was amazing. Sparks, <laughs> but no lightning. Exactly. <laughs> Yes. Were you disappointed that you didn't get to do a love scene with your wife, with your with your wife in this movie? There was, as I told her, I said, you know, there were sparks, but there was no lightning in this movie for you too. That's a great question. There was a kiss. There was a kiss in the script, and then we filmed. There was more tension in what we shot. Jack cut it, and I said, why'd you cut it? He said, I want there to be more mystery leading into the end of the movie. I said, hey, you're the boss, so whatever you feel the need to do, do it. Um, but originally, there was a little bit more lovey-dovey, and it, it fell on the cutting room floor, as they say. 
Because I understand that Chicago and its weather kind of inspired this. Yes, very much so. I feel like I, I grew up at a young age, just, uh, you know, everybody in the Midwest knows when a storm's coming in, there's like a smell in the air, like five or ten minutes before, you know, it's just going to be torrential downpour. And you'll see that like line of just dark skies. And I feel like a lot of people would get a little scared, a little worried, and I would just get excited. So I would just open up my garage, pull out like a folding chair and just sit and watch. Or if it was at night, I would turn off all my lights in my, my bedroom or the bathroom and just like press my, my face against the glass, just hoping to see some lightning strikes. And I would, I mean, for me, it was like free TV. 